This is called a quill nib. It's very similar to a rounded shading point, but it has a sharper tip and more knife-like features. And I wanna show you how this nib likes to burn and what techniques it likes to burn best. Hey Pyro, I'm Jannie Lizenby, founder of BurnSavvy.com and your Pyro Professor. And this video series is Wood Burning Tips and Their Uses, Wire Nib Edition. If you are looking for the Solid Point Edition, that's already over on my YouTube channel. Feel free to hop over there and check out that playlist. And if you want more videos like this one, remember to smash the like button and subscribe button, and then press the bell so you never miss a video. I'm using a cold wood detailer at a heat level five. Now, just a reminder, these videos are not to show you what every nib can do. It's just to show you what this nib naturally wants to do, okay? I'm not trying hard, because <laughs> you can pretty much do any technique with any nib. So I'm just letting the nib show me what it likes to do. And when I pull down to do the lines, it actually does a beautiful job for sure, when I turn it sideways and it does those clean straight lines down, it also does a nice job on the thicker lines. Probably takes a little more control. Going sideways, that's probably not the best, but I think that if you just keep it to pulling, then your lines look beautiful. This nib does not like to make dots on the other hand. <laughs> it likes to make triangles. So even when I was up on the very, very edge if I work really hard at it, I can get kind of some dots, but even then they're triangular. So I think it's really not the best if you're doing stippling or pointillism or anything like that. This would be better for some kind of decorative pattern rather than dots. It was a little better with curves than it was with dots, but not a whole lot. <laughs> it does well with those larger curves, not so well with the small curves. If you do keep it flat, it seems to do okay. So that's something to keep in mind. Obviously on the side, it is really struggling <laughs> to do those curves. When I turned it upside down and just barely, barely touched the wood with that real sharp point, that seemed to do okay too. So it's one of those that I think would take a little control, a little practice, but um, this one does okay. Now doing circles and geometric patterns take a little more control. They are harder to do. And with this particular nib, it really doesn't want to play. So doing large curves and natural lines like that would be great. But I really don't see this being a fantastic one for circles. I felt like for lettering, this was okay. It would take some effort, but you could do it. Uh, here for the calligraphy or the cursive style fonts, the ones that are real curly and curvy, it really would be better to have that up on the point. Here I have it upside down and that's working okay. You can see that it's a little bit choppy and when it's upside down like this, it tends to leave a bit of a carbon mess. <laughs> it kind of scrapes off bits of the wood and then burns it and leaves it on the piece. So just be careful not to smear that into your wood. When you're doing the big bold block lettering, this was okay. Again, it was, you know, a little bit tricky. That sharper edge really does a nice job getting some of the clean, fine, straight lines. But once again, once you hit those curves, it's hard and it would definitely take some effort. So I don't love it for lettering but I don't think that it's the most difficult thing either for this nib. On to the shading test. I actually feel like the quill does a beautiful job with shading. You do have to be careful not to get up on the sharp edge of that of the tip there because that is very knife-like. When you've got a very thin, small, rounded shader, you don't have to worry as much about that as long as it's not sharpened. But the quill is definitely sharpened. And so when you keep it a little bit more on the flat section, it does a beautiful job shading, whether you're going back and forth or pulling or doing that scumbling stroke. So this was, I felt like, a really decent option for shading, especially in very tight, small areas. 
So here is how the quill nib holds up. It does a beautiful job with lines. It's not great for dots. It's okay for curves, not great for circles. Okay for lettering, fantastic for shading. If you found this video series helpful, consider going to burnsavvy.com and subscribing to my emails where I will give you updates and you will also get to see the entire finished wire nib testing board. I'll see you there. Later, Pyro.